All right, so this actually just happened, and, and to be honest, the trauma is still fresh. Uh, we were walking into a Starbucks. We ordered a hot beverage and a, and a, and a cold beverage for me, and uh, they asked us, uh, is this for here or to go? Now, I wouldn't expect to hear this at a Starbucks because it's always the same thing, right? It doesn't matter. We must have said for here, not thinking about it. So disarmed by the question, would never imagine them asking that at a Starbucks. Then they come over with, uh, you know, for their hot drink, it was a big bowl mug type thing, like actual like, you know, porcelain or whatever mugs are made out of, like a, like a home mug. And for me, it was a glass, like a, just a glass you know, cup thing, like a, like a see-through glass that you'd have at home. Uh, what, 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 what are we doing? What do you do? I can't leave the store with it. I mean, what, what, what is this? Is this new? Are they all going to start doing that? Steve Warner here from GetRubix.com. And today I'm going to show you how to customize both your start menu and the taskbar in Windows 11 to have the apps you want on it. Cause can you imagine you're at the drive through and they ask that and you say for here and they're trying to shove some big big mug into your into your window like what what are we doing get rubik's solving for the modern workplace okay so before we get started i just want to let you know this drove me absolutely crazy and that's kind of how i know it's something that hopefully a lot of other folks will want to know right if it's driving me nuts it must be driving you nuts too um, high level, and I'll show you what happened is, you know, the, with windows 10, the start menu used to be one XML file that you could also have the taskbar into with windows 11, they're two different components and the documentation isn't clear. So it almost seems like you're allowed to have either the start menu or the taskbar because it's the same CSP underneath. Um, but after some tinkering and driving myself a little nuts, I was able to get them both pushed through into. And so we're customizing the apps that are pinned to the start menu and what's on the taskbar, right? With two totally different policies. So let's take a look. If you look at the Microsoft docs, you kind of see what I'm talking about. The previous version in Windows 10 allowed us to use an XML layout to customize our start menu. And if we wanted to do that with the taskbar, we were able to just essentially add, um, Let's see here, configure the pin applications. Yeah, it was the same XML essentially. So you can you can put them all into one giant template and just push that and you were fine. With Windows 11, it's a bit different because here, you know, we're using, um, this uses JSON. So if I were to go configure the here, let's look at the start menu, customize layout. If I click Windows 11, you're gonna see the examples it gives you are this JSON. So uh, they're, they're two different, things right and it, it going through the docs it kind of makes it seem like you have to compete they have to compete with each other but we don't really have to so i'm going to show you exactly what i did so first what you have to do is you have to organize your start menu the way you want it first so i have um edge chrome word excel powerpoint notepad uh, notepad plus plus teams company portal file explorer that's kind of what i want on you know across the board on all my devices so with it set like that what we can do is we can open PowerShell, make this a little bigger, and we can run a command called export start layout. And we can set the path to C temp, I'll call it uh, Steve layout.xml. Uh, no, not XML, sorry, JSON. Okay, so let's go look at that file and see what it consists of. So if I go to C temp, there we go, Steve layout. And if we open that up, uh, this is essentially the, uh, this is the JSON. Now, if we wanted to try to, uh, you know, clean this up, we could format it and uh, you could see you have your nice pin list. These are all the apps. So you don't have to go kind of searching for them. Uh, they're right there for you. Now, the other thing we're gonna need is the taskbar layout. Well, how do we do that? Well, there's no good way to export it. So what I would recommend is taking Microsoft's template. So for example, taskbar, policy settings, configure the pinned applications. They give you a nice little template here. Uh, I would recommend using the second one because it actually has apps. Okay. So we can copy that and let's make a new file. Okay. So I made a file called layout XML. And I'm going to copy that 
and so I'm going to paste that right here. Um, so I don't really want their app. So everything under taskbar pin list, I'm going to remove. Now, if you want to look up your own apps and try to find, they're called the AMUEDs. You see here, app user model ID. I can type get start apps. And this will kind of give me everything I need to know uh, about what I want to set down there, right? So in my case, I want to do uh, terminal, right? So terminal is Microsoft Windows terminal app. I want to do, I don't know, the file explorer. That should be pretty basic. File explorer, Microsoft Windows Explorer, and oh, calculator, whatever, Microsoft Windows calculator. So I can just replace the app user model IDs with those. Um, in this case, uh, because File Explorer is a desktop app, you'll need to call it desktop application. That's the only difference. Okay, so I've replaced them with what I want and I'm gonna save this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to Intune and we are gonna create a new policy and this is gonna be entirely custom OMA URIs. So Windows 10 and later, templates, custom, create. Uh, I'm gonna keep my naming convention. I'm gonna call it Windows 11 start menu. Um, I'm not going to call it layout because I'm going to do a few things in there. There are ultimately three settings I want to do here. So the first one is configure start pins. And these are all, you'll find these part of the policy CSP start. I'll put the link below. Um, but these kind of show you everything you can do between the start menu and the taskbar. Now the configure start pins, um, these are designed for Windows 11. These are for the apps right here under pinned. So this is exactly what you want. Some of the docs still refer to this as start layout, but in Windows 11, start layout is strictly for the taskbar. And I think that's where a lot of folks get tripped up. So in our case, we have to set this policy and the uh, value is gonna be the entire content contents of the JSON. So what we're gonna do is we're going to write this out. We're going to call this configure start pins. Uh, we don't need a description. It's going to be device, vendor, Microsoft, policy, config, start. That's going to be our hive for every policy here. Device, vendor, Microsoft, policy, config, start, and then the policy name. Uh, configure start pins. I believe some of these are in the catalog, but when I was building this out in the catalog, I had some issues. Uh, the policy wouldn't push right away. So I'm going to recommend you stick with the OMA URI. And all we're going to do is we're going to take the entire contents of our JSON. Um, in fact, we don't even have to keep it format. We can just do the whole, like the squished version. And uh, we're going to paste that in here. We're going to save it. Now we're going to do the start layout policy. So the start layout, you got to, this is a little tricky, right? Um, if both, uh, here we go. You can also use this to change apps that are pinned to the taskbar. So this is really only for taskbar on windows 11. So it's a little deceiving why this shows up here like this, but trust me. So remember I had my XML file right here. So we should be all set to just do the same thing, right? Here we go. So we're going to call this taskbar layout device, vendor, Microsoft, policy, config. And this is gonna be called start layout. And I should be able to set it to a string and just take this entire value and paste it in. But that didn't work. Uh, it should work if we're following the same logic. I'm not really sure why, but when I took a closer look at the documentation, it basically said this policy expected a local file or server path. Well, I'm not going to have a local file on the client to that XML, so I also don't have any servers. So I figured, you know what always worked for me? Blob storage. So we're not going to do that. We've already determined that it didn't work. Um, instead, what I've done is I went ahead and uploaded the layout to the same place I keep my config file for removing uh, the bloatware during branding. And I was able to get the URL off that. 
So all I did was copy that URL and that became my value. So I'm basically saying to the policy, the XML you want can be found here. And we're going to save that. And that ended up working really nice. And I'll show you exactly where you're going to check that. Um, the last thing we're going to do is you see how in this start menu, I have this recommended section. Um, I don't want that, so I'm going to get rid of it. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, and there is a setting for that called Hyatt Recommended Section. This one's very straightforward. It takes an integer value. Zero is showing it. One is hiding it. So we're going to set that to a one. So we're going to call this Hyatt Recommended Section Device uh, Vendor Microsoft Policy Config start hide recommended section and we're going to set this to the integer value of one all right you hit next you assign it to whatever groups you'd like and we create the policy all right so policy is there it's assigned let's look at the final product so i just realized my big head is covering this up because i was going to try to show it to you uh, let's do this. Okay, I could sit there for a second. So notice my taskbar. It's just File Explorer, Calculator, and Terminal. And when I hit the Start menu, we have that nice clean layout and no recommended section. Um, and if you're not sure if something's applying or you want to double check, I'm going to open up the registry and show you where this could all be found. Okay, so in the registry, you go to HKLM, Software, Microsoft, and we're going to go down to Policy Manager. We're going to expand that. We're going to select Current, Device, and Start. And you're going to see pretty much everything here. So this is kind of interesting. Um, configure Start Pins. That's our full JSON, right? That's everything we set it to. Um, hide Recommended Section is a 1. Notice this, the Start Layout. It was able to get the full contents of the XML file. If you take a look at that, right? Look at all that. It's like, even though it was uh, just a file, like a link to a file we had. So it was able to parse that all out from the file. So that I thought was pretty interesting. When I originally put just the contents of it in the policy, it was empty. So, you know, who knows? Uh, but that seemed to do the trick. The funny thing about all this is that I really don't recommend doing it. And what I mean by that is, you know, we we want to have less control over the machines. I think these are kind of superfluous cosmetic settings um, that we really don't have to worry about. However, I know how it is. You work for a large organization. They have rules. Things are slow to change. I get it. And that's, of course, the reason I'm doing this is because I get asked about it all the time and people need it. So look, if you're in that situation, you're moving to Windows 11, maybe you nail down the Windows 10 customization and now this threw a wrench at you. That's exactly how you're going to take care of both the start menu and the taskbar. We'll be seeing you.